Hey, Al Scott here. On average, how much do you think these interviews are worth to you? Of course, I've never charged for my archives in a dozen years of doing this, and I'm not about to start. But at patreon.com slash Show, you can name your own price to help support and make sure there's still new interviews to give away. So what do you think? Two bits? A buck and a half? There are usually about 80 interviews per month, I guess, so take that into account. You can also cap the amount you'd be willing to spend in case things get out of hand around here. That's patreon.com slash Show. And thanks, y'all. All right, you guys, welcome back to the show. I'm Scott Horton. It's my show, The Scott Horton Show. First up on the show today, it's our friend Grant Smith from the Institute for Research Middle Eastern Policy. That's IRMEP, I-R-M-E-P, IRMEP.org. And he's written a ton of books, I don't know, a dozen or something, about the criminal activities of the Israeli government and the Israeli lobby in the United States, including the theft of weapons-grade uranium and uh, all kinds of stuff. Divert is the latest book. And he has uh, helped to put on uh, two of these conferences, and this will be the third conference along these lines, anyway, at the National Press Club. It's Israel's Influence, Good or Bad for America. The first one was in 2014. And uh, this one is taking place this Friday, if I counted on my fingers correctly, March the 18th, uh, at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. Welcome back to the show. How are you doing, Grant? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. And uh, you did count your hands and fingers right. It's Friday, and people need to get there early, 8 o'clock preferably, not 9 a.m. So it's going to be big. It's uh, probably, I think we've had double the people sign up that we have in previous years. So I know. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Great. <laughs> this is this is taking wow. off, and uh, you know it's been building steadily. The uh, well, now the, wait a uh, minute. That one in 2014 was that yeah, not yeah. the biggest room at the National Press Club? It's the biggest room, but you know they had. Oh, they had a know, balcony though, right? They have balconies. Yeah. exactly. You're gonna exactly. need that balcony, buddy. I'm here to tell you because <laughs> that place was packed. Yeah, well, it's going to be packed again. We're not probably going to be able to keep one section walled off for lunch. They'll have to serve those outside, but you know. This is going to be the most amazing event on this subject that's ever been held. And I just, I'm so excited about it because the number of students, journalists, uh, concerned citizens, people who don't know anything about these topics, the number of people coming and the diversity that we see in that ticket, uh, registration is just amazing. And the, uh, unlike other events where some of the, some of the speakers had to go early, but we have asked every single one of them to hang around and be part of the conference and talk to people. And some of them are even uh, running little tables and exhibitions in the adjacent room, which is the second biggest room they have at the National Press Club. So if you really want to meet these people, these amazing speakers we have, you need to go and stream this event from your eyes, ears, and hands into your brain uh, and be a part of this historic event. Awesome. All right. So, well, go on. You've got until 42. So <laughs> okay. just keep telling them about it. Yeah. Okay. So we're opening up the exhibition hall and registration at 8 a.m. in the National Press Club. And there'll be some welcoming remarks and housekeeping. But then we launch right into panel one at 9 a.m., which is Israel's influence on Congress and government agencies. Uh, I'll be kicking off. Uh, with a historical review and review of some really interesting polling data. Well, let's talk all about that in the second segment about, give us a little preview of your talk. Yeah, yeah. But okay. go ahead with the rest uh, for now. Okay, so then we've got Dr. Roger Matson, a uh, former uh, executive at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and an ongoing industry consultant who is uh, presenting his findings uh, from his new book, uh, about the diversion of weapons grade uranium from the United States. This is something he has been studying for decades and was involved in aspects of the investigation when it first started in the mid seventies. Uh, so he will be also available later, uh, signing, uh, his new book, as will Professor Kirk Beatty, who has, uh, written an extensive study on Congress and how it shapes Middle East policy, um, and particularly the role of the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee. His analysis is unique because he has interviewed more than 150 staffers on the Hill who have said some incredible things 
about which bodies are present and not in the war of ideas on Capitol Hill and just how influential uh, APAC is uh, in the minds of the uh, members of Congress. And so we then go on to an important keynote presentation by a uh, columnist at Haaretz, Gideon Levy, who has come in to talk about what politicians, members of Congress, and media elites who are constantly visiting Israel on the dime of an APAC cutout organization, junkets that continue to go on, more than a thousand so far, uh, what they're being told as opposed to what's really happening on the ground and what harm that overall special relationship may be doing to the United States. Uh, this is uh, an extremely important journalist who's coming from Israel to give this presentation. Uh, and again, like all other speakers, he's going to be available for media interviews, interacting with people, uh, book signings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So then we go into morning break, exhibition hall. Our second major panel is Israel's influence on U.S. foreign policy, uh, it's being moderated by Dale Sprasansky, who's an editor at Washington Report on Middle East Affairs, which is also the co-sponsor, along with the American Educational Trust. So Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson is kicking off that panel. This is Secretary of State Colin Powell's former chief of staff. And he's not going to be talking about, you know, I don't know, minor things. He's diving deeply into how Israel's influence over the U.S. has affected America's strategic approach to the Middle East, and I can't think of a more timely topic than that. Uh, Jim Loeb is coming on to give us a history and overview of American neoconservatives. Their Yay, Jim! Role, yeah, their role in promoting the 2003 invasion of Iraq and how Israel affects their thinking. And then there'll be a, a drum roll and fireworks to go off as Justin Raimondo. Wait, thinks, wait, wait. Let me yeah. say about Jim real quick. Yeah. For people who don't know, Jim Loeb has been writing about the neoconservatives since the 1970s. He knows everything about every single one of them. He's the world's greatest expert on their movement. And, and I mean, not the, oh, people who agree with them are all neocons, but I mean, you know, the actual 75 actual neocons in the world. He Absolutely. has got their ass. Sorry. And you go know, ahead. and you know who doesn't know anything about them? Current college students and people who are maybe just coming into foreign policy and international relations right now, they don't know who the neoconservatives are. And uh, other than Jim Loeb and certain other parts of the media, you hardly hear anything about them anymore, although they're still very active. Oh, the Scott Horton Show also does some reporting on them. But uh, there's <laughs> certainly another luminary at antiwar.com, Justin Raimondo. He'll be the anchor of that panel and he'll be talking all about Israel and foreign policy issues in the presidential campaign, whether unconditional support for Israel has finally become a political issue and whether Americans will ever have, uh, or at least in this election cycle, any sort of choice at the voting booth be between these two big schools of thought, neoconservatism and pro-Israel Middle East doctrine. Uh, so this will be, of course, uh, right before lunch, and then we'll be talking about uh, responding to Israel's influence on campus and in court. There are, are a number of extremely interesting legal actions that have been filed in D.C. District Federal Court. Janet McMahon, an editor at the Washington Report, will be moderating that panel. The first up is Tark Roddy, uh, who will discuss his activism at George Mason University uh, and kind of give an overview of the often misreported key aims of uh, Palestinian solidarity movements on campuses and the attempts to thwart them uh, on campus. Maria LaHood, who's a lawyer at the Center for Constitutional Rights, will be there talking about concerted attempts to silence criticism of Israel in the U.S., in particular looking at a, a plaintiff she defended, Stephen Salita, um, and the case of Olympia Co-op and other attacks on speech that uh, are occurring right now, including some legislative attempts to ban uh, various parts of this movement. Susan yeah, I mean, this Holland? is a huge issue right now. 
It uh, is. It's, it's the just free speech rights of Palestinians in America yeah, and BDS kidding. and all this stuff. I'm sorry to stop you, but uh, we got to take this break. We'll be right back, everybody, with Grant Smith. He's telling us all about his awesome conference this Friday in D.C. You hate government, one of them libertarian types, or maybe you just can't stand the president, gun grabbers, or warmongers. Me too. That's why I invented LibertyStickers.com. Well, Rick owns it now, and I didn't make up all of them, but still, if you're driving around and want to tell everyone else how wrong their politics are, there's only one place to go. LibertyStickers.com has got your bumper covered. Left, right, libertarian, empire, police, state, founders, quote, central banking. Yes, bumper stickers about central banking. Lots of them. And, well, everything that matters. LibertyStickers.com. Everyone else's stickers suck. Hey, Al Scott Horton here for WallStreetWindow.com. Mike Swanson knows his stuff. He made a killing running his own hedge fund and always gets out of the stock market before the government-generated bubbles pop, which is, by the way, what he's doing right now, selling all his stocks and betting on gold and commodities. Sign up at WallStreetWindow.com and get real-time updates from Mike on all his market moves. It's hard to know how to protect your savings and earn a good return in an economy like this. Mike Swanson can help. Follow along on paper and see for yourself. WallStreetWindow.com. All right, you guys, welcome back. I'm Scott Horton. It's my show, Scott Horton Show, et cetera, et cetera. I'm talking with Grant Smith because the Institute for Research Middle Eastern Policy is putting on a thing this Friday with uh, the Washington, uh, I always say it wrong, Wormia, the Middle East Report thingamajig. They're putting on this deal, Israel's Influence, Good or Bad for America. It's at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. It costs 80 bucks, and you get lunch and Many speeches and panel discussions with uh, the very best that uh, Grant could have possibly picked to come and uh, present their case here. Um, Israel's influence, good or bad for America? It's this Friday in Washington D.C. at the Washington at the uh, National Press Club. Get there early, eight o'clock in the morning, um, or you know, come later if you like sleeping in. But anyway, show up. It's uh, going to be great. I was there two years ago, and it was awesome, and this one promises to be even better. And he hadn't even finished telling you about all the great people that are going to be here. And make sure and save yourself some time for, uh, to tell us a little bit about the talk that you're going to give, too. But uh, please continue, Grant, if you would. Yeah, great. Um, so if people want to get that $80, $80 price, and that includes a delicious box lunch plus a reception that follows with some nice beverages, uh, you need to enter the discount code PARTNER. Uh, 2016 or INFLUENCE, all caps, and you'll get that $20 off. So I think it's important that uh, people capture that value. Um, and if you're a member of the press or a student currently enrolled in college, you can just go to israelsinfluence.org and, and request a free ticket, and you will oh, great. get a free ticket. Yeah. So I might have to be up in the balcony, though, at this point. So anyway, we were on Susan Abuhawa, and her presentation is all about why... Uh, a group of Palestinians and um, Palestinian Americans are suing the U.S. Department of Treasury in order to hold this key part of U.S. government accountable for all of the tax-deductible charitable funding that they watch flowing between the U.S. and Israel into Israeli settlements and other activities that are displacing indigenous peoples in that region. Uh, her entire legal team... Uh, Martin McMahon, in particular, who's leading up her lawsuit, uh, will be available and present to talk about these types of initiatives. So that's another added benefit of actually being there, uh, is to be able to, to talk to such people who will be circulating around in the audience and helping out with questions if necessary. Huwaida Araf uh, is going to be talking about another lawsuit, um, another legal team about... Uh, the flotillas that were intercepted in international waters and how they're responding to that with a legal challenge as well. It'll be an afternoon break at 3 o'clock. At 325, Rula Jabril comes on uh, and talks a little bit about uh, voices that are censored slash prohibited on mainstream media and how it's helping spread uh, Islamophobia. If anyone wants... Uh, anything recent on, on Rula Jabril, all they should do is go to a recent article about uh, her on The Intercept about how a former APAC uh, PR guy tried to get her knocked out of a Voice of America appearance and swap in a Washington Institute for Near East policy analyst in her stead. This uh -huh. is a level of fear 
that APAC and other parts of the lobby have of this woman for her very frank and professional analysis uh, that's been given all over the world. She's a journalist who started out in the region and uh, being a broadcaster on Italian te- television as an anchor. Fascinating person. Uh, you interviewed her, you know, but uh, she'll be there as well. And then our final panel is uh, going to pick up on Israel's influence on mainstream media. Philip Weiss will be there from Mondo Weiss. I know you've had him on your show many times. He's going to be giving a an analysis of whether mainstream media of Israel-Palestine is getting better, getting worse, some of both. Uh, from his unique perch, he probably writes four or five articles about that topic, analyzing mainstream coverage every single month. So that's going to be fascinating. And then finally, the producer of Valentino's Ghost, Why We Hate Arabs, which is a documentary that answers questions about why both media and government perpetuate storylines that create loathing among many Americans of Arabs, Muslims, and Islam. There will be a special screening of that starting at 8 o'clock and running up until we begin this program, but she will be kicking off uh, a discussion at the end as well with 14 minutes of clips carefully selected from that uh, that should create a very interesting and dynamic final question and answer period. So that hey, you know, last it. year, uh, it wasn't her. It was somebody else on, on somewhat the same subject. It was right when I tuned in on the live stream was right when they were wrapping up. I think I saw about five minutes of it. But the point being, yeah. all the spin, all the anti-Muslim and anti-Arab spin in Hollywood movies going back for decades. Yeah, it's uh, that would have been Jack Shaheen, mm-hmm. uh, perhaps. Uh, he also showed clips from his documentary, right. um, which was kind of a, a similar topic. It was cultural stereotypes, and he also showed clips uh, from his his documentary. So, yeah, it's. I think it's. I think it. It never stops being timely. Uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely powerful stuff. Very educational stuff. I mean, I think Absolutely. any any of us could have guessed about that, but it's something else when you actually see a real presentation from somebody who did the work. You know, right? It's the homework that counts. Yeah, and these people have all. They're all experts in their own right on one or other aspect that can be put together into a conference about Israel's influence. Of course, a lot of the influence is from lobbying organizations here acting on Israel's behalf. Uh, but it, the overall theme, I think, organizes and summarizes quite well the expertise of every single one of these panelists. Right. All right, now, and did you say something about live streaming earlier? Because I, I live in Texas, something. and I'm not going to be able to skate all the way there. Yeah, for those of you who can't come and stream it again from your eyes and ears to your brain, you c- you can, what you need to watch out for uh, are at the conference red website announcements, Israel's influ- excuse me, Israel's influence.org, mm-hmm. uh, org, WRMEA.org, the Washington Report, the co-sponsor. Uh, watch out for upcoming announcements of video streams so that if you can't make it, if you can't come and, and be part of this, uh, mm-hmm. that you can at least capture that, uh, from your desktop. And so. people can follow EarMEP on Twitter as well, correct? Right. You can follow IRMEP on Twitter. We'll certainly put out any announcements. Uh, Israel's Israel Influence with no S on Twitter. Uh, it'll also be tweeted from there. Again, the main website is israelsinfluence.org. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So. All right. Now, and tell uh, us a little bit about your topic, too. Again, we're well, talking to everybody about for, for people tuning in late this Friday, the 18th. National Press Club, Washington, D.C., all day, awesome conference on the Israel lobby in the U.S., et cetera, et cetera. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Well, my topic is really about, uh, you know, this, this whole concept that Benjamin Netanyahu has when he was talking to West Bank settlers in 2001. Um, what is it? Why does Benjamin Netanyahu think the America is something you can easily move, which is his view of America? And really going through 10 different ways that Israel moves America uh, by using its influence uh, in the United States, mainly uh, as, a, as a product of 336 lobbying, uh, parts of the lobby, not all of them lobby, um, Israel affinity organizations that take various actions, sometimes in concert, sometimes just regionally, sometimes very locally, 
to promote agendas and to promote um, the latest program, whether it was the uh, big drive for a confrontation with Iran and then later against the Iranian uh, nuclear program agreement that came out last year, whether it's constant pressure on media organizations, whether it is local actions, uh, which are not reported as lobbying activities and the aid gotten out of state organizations, whether it's economic development or trade missions or out, out building buildings for Israel affinity organizations with U.S. taxpayer funding from the state coffers or buying Israel bonds. So really drilling down on how Israel affinity organizations move America, and also some of the, of course, bad outcomes of that. And you and I were joking around a little bit, uh, and you gave me a great idea, and I've got to credit you for this, uh, about what is the end result of the constant disinformation that comes out of this lobby, which terrifies... Wait, 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 wait. The drum's playing. I want to make sure the live audience can hear the information one more time, and then, I'm sorry, you can finish up the anecdote uh, over time in the break here. But everybody go to israelsinfluence.org. It's the the uh, Washington Report on Middle East Affairs and uh, earmep.org, uh, Grant Smith's group. Great conference this Friday at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. Israelsinfluence.org. All right, now go ahead, dude. Okay, all right. Uh, so, you know, we are somewhat of an island of misperception. Uh, right before, in 2014, before the, it came to a head. Wait, you and of, me or the USA? <laughs> no, no, no. Us in the United States, Americans, people who hold U.S. citizenship and simply live here. Um, so, okay, well, I mean, you asked me. You said, Grant, do you think, do you think Americans even know who occupies who? And that, I thought, was a very poignant question. And so I did four different polls using Google Consumer Research, and I found out if you ask a Canadian whether Israelis occupy Palestinian land or Palestinians occupy Israeli land, the majority, some 51%, think that the Israelis occupy Palestinian territory. If you take that question across the pond to the U.K., and ask the Brits, 57.7% think that Israelis occupy Palestinian territory. If you go down south to Mexico and say, ¿Cuál de las siguientes crees que sea cierto? And ask them the same question, you find out that 55% of Mexicans, the majority in all of these countries, think Israelis occupy Palestinian territory. Only in the United States, an island of misperception, in the northern hemisphere, uh, do you find 48.2% think that the Palestinians occupy Israeli land? And that is the majority, or rather the majority of Americans. When you ask them the most fundamental question driving conflict right now, they think the situation is opposite of what it actually is. And this is, I think... Uh, a statistically significant red warning flag. How can you possibly conduct policy when every single American has this conception that not only is the United States in grave danger, but we have this ally on the other side uh, of the Atlantic that is similarly valued, looking out for us, uh, a victim of these issues and not, uh, not the aggressor, you know, how can we possibly have good policies when so many Americans believe things that are fundamentally uh, flawed and mis misinformation, basically? Yeah. Um, it's so, really amazing. 49.2 to 39.8, it says here. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Just... So, it, I mean, it, it, I think it's... I think it's illuminating. This is obviously not the kind of poll that Gallup is going to take. This is not the kind of thing that is going to be reported uh, by establishment media, but I mean, it's embarrassing, frankly. And it's, it's the kind of information people can use to begin to say, look, you know, if we can't even have a serious fact-based discussion because so many people are misinformed, 
where is this misinformation coming from and why am I in the form of tax deductible charitable contributions given by any other people subsidizing the gap and subsidizing this information indirectly uh, by our very pliable federal agencies which rarely do anything uh, and the reason why they're subject to so many lawsuits rarely do anything uh, to enforce laws and, and to really confront uh, some of these major problems, whether it's illegal settlement funding or, or just the propaganda that's, that's driving bad policy. So a uh, very in-depth look, fact-based look, polling-based look, and uh, happy that uh, Kirk Beatty will be really looking at Congress. I'm not going to be talking so much about that, but rather just what's going on across America. Yeah. Well, you know, I got to say, too, here that I'm so disappointed in the Canadians. I mean, 51 to 34, I guess, is pretty good, but 51. And then the Brits, too, with all their history in Palestine and and the world wars and everything else. And they're at least, you know, on that side of the Atlantic Ocean from here. And yet uh, they don't seem to be doing, you know, that much better than, well... The Canadians, anyway. The Americans are just shameful here, but, <laughs> right. but well, for the well, Brits to be where they are on this, I think yeah. is still, you know, they're they're pretty out of bounds here. Fifty-seven percent when that ought to be ninety. Come on, right? But still, you know, still the highest score. Yeah, <laughs> of, well, that's true. So, right. yeah. and for the reasons I just cited, probably just the just the fact of geography. But well, comments in that yeah. survey are fascinating too. Uh, one, the first person compared it to two fleas arg- arguing over which owns the dog they live on. So there are a lot of very dry Brit comments on that <laughs> as well. But he's, uh, it, it's a fascinating survey and it's one that we'll be talking about, uh, at some length during this conference. So, right. uh, the other one, of course, is, uh, we also surveyed and I, 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 again, what Americans think of foreign aid to Israel. Uh, the same uh, survey that we did in 2014, we'll be looking at changes in public opinion on that as well. So very important uh, to do these types of surveys. And it's good to have a forum, whether it's your show or this conference, to be able to tell people about these results and what they imply. Yeah, well, thanks for breaking the story here. It's bad news, but I'm happy to hear it. Um, all right, again, everybody, Rula. Gave, huh? Don't forget that. It was a very good idea you gave me on the last show. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, all right, so Rula, Jebriel, uh, Gideon Levy. Wow, that's going to be great, man. I'm a big fan of his. Uh, Susan Albuhawa, uh, uh, you'll have to say it, Hu- Huweda Araf, huh? Kirk James Beatty, Catherine Jordan, Maria LaHood, Jim Loeb, yay, Roger <laughs> J. Matson, Tarek Roddy, and Justin Raimondo, along with Grant Smith, the great Philip Weiss, our hero, um, and then Lawrence Wilkerson, uh, making up, uh, doing penance for his role in lining us into the war in Iraq. Good for him. Janet McMahon, who is great. And, uh, Delinda Haney, Dale, Sp- uh, Sprusansky. Right. Yep. All right. So everybody go to israelsinfluence.org. That's israelsinfluence.org and, uh, get your tickets. It's this Friday, the 18th of March at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. Uh, you can get there. It will be awesome. Thank you so much, Grant. Appreciate it. Thanks for spreading the word. Hell yeah. All right, we'll be right back in with Gareth. Hey, I'll Scott Horton here for MPV Engineering. This isn't for all of you, but for high-end contractors specializing in industrial construction and end users who own and operate industrial equipment, MPV offers licensed professional consulting on chemical and mechanical engineering for your projects. Tanks, pressure vessels, piping, heat exchangers, HVAC equipment, chemical reactors for oil companies or manufacturing facilities, as well as project management support and troubleshooting for those implementing designs. MPV will get your industrial project up and running. Head over to mpvengineering.com. Hey, you own a business? Maybe we should consider advertising on the show. See if we can make a little bit of money. My email address is scott at scotthorton.org. Hey, Al Scott Horton here to tell you about this great new book by Michael Swanson, The War State. In The War State, Swanson examines how Presidents Truman, Eisenhower, and Kennedy both expanded and fought to limit the rise of the new national security state after World War II. If this nation is ever to live up to its creed of liberty and prosperity for everyone, we are going to have to abolish the empire. Know your enemy. Get The War State by Michael Swanson. It's available at your local bookstore or at Amazon.com in Kindle or in paperback. Just click the book in the right margin at scotthorton.org or thewarstate.com. 